everyone and welcome back to Adora Hack. My name is Adora and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about other tech fields that pay really well that are not software engineering. If you are trying to get into tech, as you know, look left tech, right tech, everywhere tech. If you are wondering how to get into tech but you're surrounded by engineers and you don't really think programming is your thing, then this is a video for you to watch because there's so many other tech fields that do not involve programming that I will be sharing today. If this is something you're interested in, please make sure you stick around to watching this video. If you have a friend that would be interested in this, please make sure you share this video to your friends as well. So on that note, let's get right into the video. Okay, um, so that I don't waste any more, like, so that I don't waste your time, I'm just going to go into these different fields. And one of the first fields for me will be a PM. So when I say PMs, I say product managers and I say project managers. I'm putting both under one umbrella because different companies depending on you know how the job description is set up or what the job entails different things mean different things to different people so pms in some companies would be handing like handling specific programs when you think program manager you might be thinking okay some kind of developer relations um program management some kind of community management for this particular thing and then in some companies pms could also be like program management, project management, which is like, I'm going to be overseeing the design strategy and implementation of the products that this particular team I'm working in is, you know, building. So yeah. program management, project management, product management, depending on the company that you are working in. So some companies will be using program management for only like, you know, community dev rel related things but other people could be using program management in still the core software engineering scenario so that's why i didn't want to try and like group them separately uh project managers as well could fall under either the projects could be some kind of you know community projects the projects could be like an actual product like a thing like a new feature that the team is trying to roll out to to their existing products and they're trying to announce at some conference it could be a new product itself and you're supposed to be like you know involved in managing that whole process and you know working with the existing customers and iterating and giving feedback to teams and working that whole cycle essentially pms handle that they are more like the middle people they are like the intermediary between the engineering teams and the customer facing side of it all and this involves a lot of people a lot of communication the next one i would say is technical writing and me personally yeah i'm not a fan of i'm sorry if i'm shaking any tables i'm i'm so sorry but i i just have to say this i'm not a fan of learning about something just because you want to write about it like there's some people that do this thing where it's, it's a different thing if you stumble upon a new technology you are using it you learn about it and then you go and write about it but i don't understand people that are not software engineers and then they're learning about how to use them static web apps in azure for example just so that they can write about static web apps and then after they finish writing that article god knows they don't use static web apps again until like five years i'm not talking about those types of people i believe that if you are going to be writing things that other engineers are supposed to read like if you're going you're supposed to be writing articles or writing documentation or writing all these things you should be involved in that engineering or product process at least right but i mean Technical writing isn't just about writing the docs or writing the blog posts or all of that. To be honest, especially if it's API documentation, if you are an engineer and you are working on an endpoint, I think you should be the one in all honesty that documents that. I think you should be the one in all honesty that documents that and depending on whatever api gen or swagger this one or whatever it is that you're using to generate the documentation then that's different but like for me i would say like other things like when i'm going to give you an example so let's say you have like a some kind of um product team that's different from the engineering teams and 
these are the things that like interact with the customers most times these people when the engineers that build this thing have built this thing they can look at you know how like how like the different use cases that exist for this thing um the different different use cases that exist for using this feature you know how to use this feature write tutorials on using that feature or even press releases when you're like okay abc is about to announce xyz in that case technical writing can come into play you are not directly the one coding it but you are working with the people that are in that engineering side if that makes sense and it works so i mean technical writing full-time or part-time if it's part-time then you could be a software engineer as well writing stuff because to be honest whether you like it or not <laughs> as a software engineer you're going to be writing things that are not code i'm not even talking about you having a blog and writing articles if that's not your thing it's not your thing but you're going to be writing if you run into a problem and you need help fixing it and you want to open some kind of github issue if it's an open source project that you were working with that you had that issue with you're going to write you're going to describe the error that you have you're going to write the steps that you tried to mitigate that issue and why it's not working you're going to write stuff in a way that someone that has zero context can come and look at your thing and understand that ex this is exactly what this person is facing and they can go ahead to help you if you are writing prs as well you're going to write you're going to describe what this pull request means why you are adding this feature like you're going to write stuff essentially so this whole technical writing thing is kind of dicey but depending on whatever thing that you land into you don't necessarily need like code 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 to you know be a technical writer you can be doing all this you know press releases you can be doing all these use cases you can be writing about other things like okay i'm writing about how to properly do a presentation i'm writing about why it's why good lighting is important for remote talks i'm writing about all these different things that's still writing so that can be you the next thing for me would be product design i think that these people need to understand the users need to understand who their customer base is for a particular product need to understand you know their patterns their behaviors their needs their wants just so that they can design prototypes you know design screens that can solve these people's problems in the most efficient way possible and in the least stressful way you don't want someone to be having a very terrible experience on your app or on your design i work with the engineers essentially and then they give these things to the engineering teams that actually go ahead and write the code and code out those screens it's like a mobile app a web app or if we're talking XR experience now, like a full-on um, XR scenario. Twitter is a product, like it's an actual application that people are using. And as a result, there's a design team that works on whole Twitter experience. And then they're the engineers that actually go ahead and build out those features. Uh, so companies like Twitter, definitely you'd see product designers working there other companies you may not right other companies may be doing things like you know ai related things um some kind of research related things quantum computing for example where i don't think you'd see designers there but in a lot of tech companies you would still see product designers another one for me would be technical recruiters these are very amazing people i think because at the end of the day Technical recruiters are the ones that go ahead to get these amazing technical talents for these amazing companies. It involves a lot of working with people. You're going to be talking to people, you're going to be assessing people, you're going to be recruiting people, you're going to be telling people about the people that you've... Like, it's, it's a people role, essentially. And these people work with a particular hiring manager, or a particular team, or a particular company. Um, you know to get the most fit candidates for the roles to get the most fit candidates for the uh, different jobs so be even if you are not writing the code because you are recruiting tech talent you get it's kind of important to understand at least some things in like if you know some things about tech if you have like 
you know small familiarities with the domain that you're actually recruiting for it will make things a lot easier so another one is operations <laughs> operations actually keeps the company running these people make sure the company runs smoothly they worry about the business supply chain these people essentially if they don't exist if you like have the best products in the whole of the world you will use it by yourself <laughs> you use it by yourself and speaking of having the best products in the whole of the world and using it by yourself if you don't have proper operations in your business let's also talk about the marketers let's also talk about the um, business development people they're the ones that go out there and help you find those customers those paying customers because at the end of the day if you build an amazing product again and you don't have paying customers even the engineers are working for you where's the money gonna come from the last one i want to talk about is uh, tech support so these tech support people sometimes software engineers actually kind of do so they're in some companies that software engineers double up as on core engineers as well but there are some companies that software engineers are different and these tech support people are different so these tech support people are the ones on standby they are the on call people that if something goes wrong they are the ones to try and figure out what went wrong but then when they now discover what went wrong if it's something that they can't directly fix they can now escalate to the engineers that would go ahead and do the fixing but ultimately they are the ones on that on call end in some companies it's different so if you want to be those kinds of people you can find companies where these roles exist and apply to them this is a very important role because a lot of companies for different reasons maybe for different businesses for getting good customers even to make the investors smile they want to keep like a particular you know sla they'll tell you that oh um this one our service is always like this and what they call it we always have a and this one 90 percent availability 99.9 99.99 99.999 four nines we will just be lying seven nines anyways that's a different conversation but if a, if it's a company that cares so much about these metrics they want to hire the best support people so that at any time when something is down your response time is quick and everything is back up so if this is like a field that you're interested in you can find companies that really value these roles and are hiring for these roles and apply to these rules thank you so much for watching this video to the end this is a non exhaust exhaustive list there's so many like I'm I kid you not there's so many non coding tech fields that you can apply to I wrote an article with Sultan last year about this and I'm going to leave that article in the description so you can check it out and um, see other ones that I didn't mention because the list is plenty and I really wasn't trying to make this video long. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. If you liked it, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to me, please make sure that you subscribe. If you have any idea of any videos that you want me to put out, please leave that in the comments below. I will be reading your comments and responding. Thank you so much once again and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>